feeding and held there by Gaiman. Over to the far side, shot coming in and into the back of the net. Morgan McIntyre has tied it at one. Same strategy, Logan settles, dishes over for Smart, fires, it's loose in front, still loose right along the goal line, diving save and kicked away. Carly Thompson trots over to that penalty corner mark. And here's the first corner for Stevens. Slow developing, now here comes the shot from long range and it's in. The Ducks are on top, 1-0 on a rifled shot from the top. Down. Back to Buffenbarger. Still in front, Buffenbarger moving in, Buffenbarger scores! In position on the back line. Up ahead, Finley moving in. This is Finley one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Big save by Franco. We welcome you back, getting set for the second half of playoff action. Between the Stevens Ducks and the Arcadia Knights, we're tied at one. Drew Casey and Maura Sheridan, and more that first half. The score would suggest it. The play would suggest it, too. Pretty even first 30 minutes. Yeah, from what I saw, like you said, very even. I definitely think that the pace of play could even be turned up a notch. I'm sure you'll see that, especially towards the end of that fourth quarter, if things remain tied. Uh, I Again, I, I felt like there could have been a little bit more of switching fields and just kind of get that defense moving. Um, everyone was kind of playing from one side. I'm sure that was talked about at halftime. Head coach Meredith Spencer Blates for the Stevens Ducks. She's in her sixth season of the program, and Erin Livingston is in her 13th season as the head coach at Arcadia. It's two experienced teams, and of course, the teams in this second half will reverse directions. If you're just joining us, it's Stevens. In the Stevens red base uniforms with the white numbers, the gray trim down the sides. They're going right to left on your screen here in the second half. Arcadia, similar color scheme. White based unis, they're heading left to right. Scarlet numbers and scarlet shorts on what is a chilly night and only getting chillier. 49 when we started and we are down to 47 at the moment. Degrees, of course. The winner meets the victor in Fairleigh Dickinson and Misericordia. They are scoreless, just about to start the second half. Chance here for the Ducks. Farinello who had the assist, kicked away. Gracie Fenner will get credit for her third save there. Yeah, good luck if you have a, a chance to just take a big whack at it. Right in front of the goalie, you're going to do that. Uh, luckily for everybody else, for uh, Stevens, or excuse me, for Arcadia, that was right in front and kind of right to the pads. Otherwise, that could have been obviously a score because wide open, and that was a bit of a defensive lapse, I would say. Nearly two minutes into this second half. Shot totals coming out of the break. Stevens outshot Arcadia six to five officially. Four corners for Arcadia, three for the Ducks. And of course, a goal apiece. Logan for Stevens in the first quarter and Morgan McIntyre as a result of a penalty corner in the second as it's all even at a goal apiece. This is Farinella again who takes a combination of her and Logan off that right side. Farinella through traffic, kicked aside. Not sure it made contact with anybody and the initial shot came from outside the circle. I will say, as a goalie, if that's you know not communicated to you right away, you're just going to go with your instinct um, and just kick it. <laughs> and that comes from the defense having to communicate immediately. No one touched it. If no one does, and that was a maybe sort of situation, you might as well, I guess. It's one of the most unusual plays <laughs> in college athletics. You just, everyone feeling, broadcasting, watching, you just feel your heart sink. Well, why'd she let it go in? <laughs> Especially on one that close. And of course, as you said, just can't be too careful on something like that. It's my favorite thing to just kind of watch the eyes of somebody who doesn't <laughs> understand when it first happens. Just the, at first, total glee that there's a goal, then total confusion about what just happened. You're with us for the first time tonight, or the first time ever, for field hockey. This is a multi-purpose field at the Dubon Athletic Complex. And you see the ball spotted there, right on the black and white edged lines. We're gonna back it up a little bit, says Janice McGrath, our head referee. It's the black indicators on the field to indicate all the boundaries, shooting circle, etc. It's 
Speaking of other sports, these two teams are taking on each other in men's soccer in the semifinals. And they are scoreless late in the first half. And Stevens Volleyball is up two sets to none on Misericordia in the semifinals of conference play. That's just next door behind us in a much warmer Canavan Arena. Of course, here we're tied at one, and elsewhere in field hockey, nothing, nothing between Misericordia and FDU Florham. the second all-time meeting between these two teams and the first was 10 days ago when Arcadia knocked off Stevens two to one. All of this as a result of conference realignment. Stevens joining the Mac Freedom in 2019. Arcadia joining the Mac Freedom from the Mac Commonwealth in 2020, but no season in 2020. And have never played prior to all of that happening as non-conference opponents. Well, kind of the way these games are uh, potentially shaking out, this could be kind of a new rivalry that's formed here today. And, you know, prior to this, at the beginning of the season, this could be kind of one of those things that we're always talking about these two teams because, you know, we were talking about this at the break. I've been really impressed about Arcadia, and then you look at their record and you're kind of shocked by it. Giveaway, Froelich. Logan may have gotten a piece, and it strikes right through her legs. Amma could have been a second rebound chance. This is Letursky who stopped by Edie, but a foul is whistled. Mention the gloves more that some players might elect to put gloves on. It looks like Kyla Edie for Stevens has put gloves on. I don't see any other duck with gloves. In terms of a field player, and Arcadia is. Actually, almost everybody has gloves on for Arcadia, <laughs> at least half of the field players. It's a grip thing. It depends on how comfortable you are with it and probably where you're from. If you grew up playing in this you know, level of uh, cold, you're fine with it. If you didn't, then you're probably going to need gloves. And also, if you take a lot of hits in your game, then you're probably going to need them. If you're more of a push person, you sweep it a little bit more, then you're fine. Somebody like yourself growing up playing field hockey in Vermont, right? Yeah. So, so you were a glove person, I, I assume? Oh, no? yeah, and okay. I feel totally warm right now. Everybody else is cold. I feel great. <laughs> I've, I've got a hat on. I've got gloves <laughs> in my pocket. I'm like, I'm going to have to put those on soon. <laughs> Near break for Bryn Froelich there. She couldn't control it, but she will win a free hit on the foul whistled. Samantha Hessels with the quick restart came up too high, and it will be a penalty corner. Yeah, like that play by Hessel, just when in doubt, just kind of try to force a corner. Obviously, you're not always trying to knock it into someone's legs or their feet, but if you have a clear opportunity to do so, you might as well draw something up. This is a tie game. Things went well the first time, or not the first time, the last time you had a corner and resulted in a goal. It was perfectly executed, so it starts here. And I imagine they're going to try to mix things up. They've been coming near side with this corner. I bet it goes directly to the top of the circle this time around. Stevens, 14th most corners in Division Three, more than 11 per match. It goes straight on high. A reverse back to this near side to Appleby. Pushed inside, Farinella, rebound, score! Bryn Froelich makes it two to one, Stevens. Her fifth of the year from the fifth year player. It could be the biggest of her career. 